it's been unusually warm since February already and you can notice it all over the garden. The plums are all blooming heavily. Mm -hmm. The cherry is blooming, the green gauge is blooming. It looks like this year the harvest should be really plentiful unless some unexpected frost comes and destroys everything. Look guys, our sour cherry tree is in bloom and it looks amazing. We are quite nervous because in April frost is not uncommon. It's quite a big risk when everything is awakened so early in the year. We are three weeks ahead of normal time, normal blooming time. Even if we didn't want to believe it, deep down we somehow felt that we were heading for a disaster. It looked too good to be true. Basically all the fruit trees and shrubs were in bloom or even developing fruits already. Maybe 10 days later it got so much colder and frosty nights started silently destroying everything. So here we are, returning from the city where we had to be because of work, trying to save at least something. It's late evening and we have just come from the city because we were at work and we are trying to save some of our shrubs because this is a very frosty night, the last one and the frostiest. So look, we've been covering some of them, these are blueberries for example, hopefully some of them survive. We can see the moon, very great atmosphere here in the garden, but yeah, so we covered these blueberries and honeyberries, some currants and let's hope for the best. The frosty episode is finally over and we've been assessing the damage. It doesn't look good. It looks like we've lost almost everything, right? Hopefully not almost everything, but a big part for sure, yeah? Basically all the fruits are affected, yes. There were a lot of frosty nights in a row and a lot of those we were not here because we had to be in the city so we couldn't really do anything about it. Out of eight nights, there were six frosty nights and mornings, which is not good. When we had a chance, we used the non-woven fabric, the light one, and we covered our shrubs, some of them, our strawberries, but this fabric is usually used on the garden beds, you know, for something that is on the ground and our shrubs are everywhere in the garden and they are quite big, some of them already. So it's impossible because we have, I don't know, 500 shrubs already yeah. and at least half of them are fruit shrubs, even more. So we tried what we could. Yeah, we prioritized. Yeah, but the frost was too strong and too terrible. The trees, the ones that have fruits, are very, very big. So there is no saving them. We know various methods, but usually they are done, like you can make fire or something in between the trees. We are not here all the time, so yeah, it's, it's difficult. The main reason for this is that February and March were extraordinarily warm and everything woke up too soon, too early. All the plants, all the trees, all the shrubs a month in advance. Just to put into perspective how warm it was, this year's March was the warmest ever recorded here. We got many warm days, almost summer-like, during some periods there was Sahara dust blowing over the majority of Europe. 
in the strong southerly flow from the Sahara Desert, and the March was even warmer than the majority of April's here. So you can see it was really extraordinary. That's why everything woke up too soon. Everything sprouted, everything got green, and it was blooming very fast. And that is unheard of, right? Yeah. So... Even apple trees uh, froze because they were not supposed to be in bloom yet, but they were... <laughs> yeah, people didn't even know what would happen, like, exactly, because we know the critical temperatures for flowering fruit trees, but our trees already had fruits, a lot of them, and the fruits are even more sensitive than the flowers on the trees so yeah so that's why almost everything is gone and we are quite sad yeah i read on the internet that it was the worst case of frost in the last 100 years or so so uh, it's not just us who are affected it's basically the whole region the whole central europe at least mm -hmm. so this year there will be a shortage of fruit probably yeah in some parts of the czech republic almost 100 percent of the crops mm -hmm. or how is it called are gone yeah everything frost damaged yeah but i think we'll have something and we have a, a big variety of fruits so i think that's good because some of them will come later even goji berries which we don't like that much the taste will be appreciated this year so those ones haven't flowered yet because they flower in summer or sometimes so they are safe but mulberries are gone here we have a big mulberry usually it sprouts and gets green in the second half of May, when there is no risk of frost anymore. This year it was too soon, so it got green in April. And this is the result. It can't withstand frost at all. I mean the new leaves and flowers. It should get green again. Not sure if any flowers will show up. Usually here in our area, until the mid-May there is a risk of frost, but then everything is okay. So all these trees usually start waking up after, but no, this year it was a month in advance, so they experienced frost for the first time. Mm -hmm. And these plants like mulberries, kiwi and also walnuts are very sensitive. They can survive even zero mm -hmm. degrees Celsius, the freezing point. I mean the leaves, they die immediately. So the trees, all of these ones are hardy. In winter they can survive like strong frosts. It's okay to grow them here. But the leaves, they are done and they should sprout again, yeah. but probably without the flowers. Yeah. We don't know about mulberries, so we'll see, but walnuts are done. <laughs> no walnuts this year. Yeah, and for the first time, even strawberries froze. That is also very new. We will still probably going to have some strawberries, at least something, but a lot of the flowers here have this black middle of the flower that means it's frozen but new ones are developing so not all is lost yet current yosta berries even honey berries which should be from very cold areas when there are fruits already everything is sensitive so some of them are gone yeah. too, some of them survived, it looks like. Blueberries, we don't know, we'll see later. But again, there were flowers and little fruits already developing. Other fruit trees here in the garden look green and kinda okay. Plum trees, apple trees and cherries. So the leaves can handle frost 
but the fruits, the tiny fruits that were appearing are kinda black and done as well. Sometimes a few flowers can survive hidden somewhere in the tree, so we'll see, maybe some fruits will appear, so there would be at least a smaller harvest, we'll see. Sour cherries are here in the yard, so it's a bit better here, because the yard is usually a bit warmer, surrounded by all the buildings. But yeah, I don't like this. I was telling Tommy how sad I am that this happened. And it's all because the winters are too warm. And the beginning of spring was also too warm. Peter had some uh, sleepless nights counting the damage. Yeah, usually it's like it happens uh, because of the weather, but it's usually, it's not raining, it's too dry and I'm stressing about that, but this was new, the frost, oh my god. <laughs> oh, yeah, but that's life, that's life in the garden. Hopefully it won't happen for another 100 years, yeah. because this was really extraordinary and unusual but this year yeah it's it's interesting at least we could still admire our colorful flowers luckily the frost was not able to destroy their beauty also had to start mowing the grass in the garden again. Since it had been warm previously, the grass has been growing fast. It is a lot of work, but it always looks so nice and tidy when the grass is mowed. This year we again plan to let some parts grow, so there is a meadow, which would also be a great hiding place for some insects and small animals. the last day of April and it's really windy today but that's not why we are here we are here because we have the first fruits to harvest from our honeyberry shrubs which is really unusual because normally they bear fruit at the end of May maybe so we are almost one month early mm -hmm. but there are first three fruits here there are two and there's one more here they are quite small but Still, it's really weird that we have something to harvest so early. Yeah. I'll take the small one then. Very tiny. <laughs> it's really tiny, so <laughs> there's almost no taste. <laughs> but yeah, I can taste fruit. Yay. It's really exciting to have fruit so early, but as we could observe last week, it's a disaster for nature, with the frost and all the fruit trees frozen. So, yeah, this is a nice consolation prize, but we lost so much. Mm -hmm. Yay, honey berries. <laughs> I'm looking forward to more. We have more shrubs. They are still green. The ones that weren't destroyed by the frost, so there will be more, yay! It's been extraordinary warm and there are quite a lot of nettles growing in our garden. They are not wanted. When you touch them, they burn your skin and it's not pleasant, but they are weeds, so they are spreading everywhere. 
so I'm going to use them. I'm going to create a natural fertilizer out of them. Apparently in English it is called a nettle tea or nettle compost tea. So I will just pick them and I will throw them here in this barrel. I want the biggest amount possible of nettles and later I will pour water there in the barrel and let it steep for a few weeks. It will partially decompose and then the water will be used as a, as a liquid natural fertilizer. So I will water our shrubs and other plants and it's very nice. So let's get to it. I need to wear gloves because otherwise I would be done. <laughs> Nettles are very common in Europe, but I think people in North America don't know them very well. So when you are here, don't touch them. <laughs> I gathered quite a lot of nettles. We have a lot of them here in the garden. Yay! <laughs> I am burned everywhere, but that's life. You have to be tough while doing this, or you have to wear... What is it called? This hazmat suit, you know, when there is an alien virus in the movies. They wear it. So that would probably be suitable for picking nettles. <laughs> And now I will just pour water there and then we will need to wait for, I don't know, maybe four to six weeks. Okay, it's full. Maybe I added too much of nettles. <laughs> so, yeah, it will be okay. We need to cover this. And don't forget to use something heavy so the cover, the lid, doesn't fly off. And now we just need to wait for four to six weeks, I think. And occasionally, over this period, you can stir it because it will get moldy and it will be quite disgusting, it will stink, so it's better to stir it from time to time. something in our raised beds. We have some plants here, some flowers. These are dahlias and they need to be planted after the last frosts of the year or you can plant them like a couple of weeks before the last frost because it will take some time for them to grow up. Mm -hmm. so, so they will be hidden in the soil. Yeah, we have 25 pieces which I split between the two beds and now I'll try to plant them next to these uh, support sticks because it gets windy here often and they could break in the summer probably mm -hmm. so better be safe than sorry
love this very big and beautiful lilac. It's always so pretty when it's blooming. And it's here, kinda hidden in this wild corner of our garden, hard to access. But we will plant more lilacs elsewhere and hopefully we will enjoy such beautiful flowers later. Even though we lost so much, we try to stay positive and enjoy the garden regardless. The progress doesn't stop and everything keeps evolving. That's how it is with nature. When we need a break, we love going for walks in the countryside and clearing our heads. Even the yellow rapeseed fields started flowering earlier this year. They always look so pretty and sometimes it feels like the sun is present in every little flower that shines around us. Anyway, don't forget to give us a thumbs up to support our channel and see you guys next time. Bye!